Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video we are continuing with the novel Leviathan Falls which is book 9 of the Expanse series. The first part of the novel is in a previously posted video that you can find a link to in the upper right corner. Before we begin, subscribe if you haven't, give us a like, drop us a comment and now part 2 of Leviathan Falls. Theresa was in her room on the Rosanante. It was the morning of her 16th birthday. Suddenly her father appeared beside her. He wished her happy birthday and he told her that everything was going to be alright. When she said it's not, he said it will. I only need a little more time and we will all be together. I dreamt too small before. I can see better now. You'll see better too. Just then Alex knocked on her door and asked her if she's hungry. That's when her father disappeared and she left and went to the galley with Alex. The crew had made a small cake with two candles on it for her birthday. She was pleased that the plan to leave her at the religious academy failed. The transit from the New Egypt gate to the Freehold gate was quick. When they got into the Freehold system, they looked for the gathering storm, which is the ship that Draper had stolen. But instead, they saw a different Laconian destroyer in orbit around Freehold. This could be a problem. Colonel Tanaka was still an Abbasia. A medic from the school had saved her life. Holden's bullet had taken out most of her right cheek and some of her upper jaw. The medic warned her to stay an extra week to let the healing gel work, but she left the minute that Captain Mugabo arrived. While the Sparrowhawk was not at 100%, Mugabo assured her that it was serviceable. On the Sparrowhawk, the medics continued to work on her, but by the time the Sparrowhawk was on the way, the Rosinante was already gone. He sent out a description of the disguise of the Rosinante to every system where the Laconian repeaters were. Colonel Tanaka got a message from Admiral Trejo, who told her that a ship matching the description that she sent out arrived in the freehold system and he has an idea that he wants her to try. The ship that was in orbit around freehold was the Laconian destroyer Rising Direco and they had just issued an ultimatum to everyone in the freehold system. They gave them a hundred hours to surrender the gathering storm or they would act against the civilian population. The Rossi headed for Draper Station, making sure to get there without the Direco seeing. Once they got there, Naomi met with Julian Houston, who is now the captain of the Gathering Storm and Draper Station. And while Naomi and Julian were discussing what they were going to do about the Direco's threat, they got an alert, a message broadcast from Anton Trejo who wanted to propose an alliance between Nagata and himself. What Trejo proposed was a blanket amnesty for the underground. He would stop all aggressive action and not limit or control trade. He would guarantee the safety of any ship making use of the gates. He knows how dangerous unmonitored access of the gates are and that humanity has a shared enemy. He is offering a united front against the enemies of humanity and in return all they want is Theresa Duarte. He guarantees that no one will harm her. Theresa was willing to be handed over to save lives but Naomi figured out that Trejo was the one holding the gun and then pretending that she was the one who gets to decide whether he pulls the trigger. It was just another threat. She said if he had led by pulling the Direco back from Freehold, it would have been a different thing. But he didn't. He chose this. And I don't trust him. Plus, he was trying to get them to hand over Theresa, who really didn't want to go. So Naomi was going to turn the offer down. But Julian betrayed them. She trapped them in their room and made contact with the Sparrowhawk. She believes that Anton is a man of his word and she was going to take this chance to save a hundred thousand lives. And she was sure that she was making the right decision. Kit and his little family was on the Prius headed for the gate. Once through, they would make the transit to the New Western system. He had just finished recording a message for his father when his son woke up. He put in a call to Rohi so she could come and feed him. When she got there, he could see she was upset. When he asked what happened, she told him there was another blink in the sinister band system. When he asked her how bad it was, she replied, they are dead. Everyone in the system, they are all just dead. 
the San Esteban system was one of the first colonial settlements. It had 18 million people spread across the system and now they were all dead. Alfredo called the Amaterasu from the south system went there with a cargo to find a system full of corpses. Some of the bodies were sent to Laconia and the reports were also sent to Elvi. She was also going over the interrogation of Jim Holden explaining the gate builders from the view he got when he was connected to the ring station. Then Fayez came in and Elvi gave him her theory Although what the enemy did in the Esteban system worked, she doesn't think they know it worked. She thinks that the enemy measures success by the lack of travel to a system. And since travel to and from the Esteban system through the gate did not stop, they may not realize that they had succeeded. She compared it to hearing rats running around in your walls and you put out poison. And you know you succeeded when the noise of the rats stop. Fayez brought up to Elvi that she is violating ethics with Kara, but she says that if she is sacrificing Kara and she loses her in order to keep humanity from going to zero, then it's cheap. If it costs everything, it is still a good trade. And he doesn't like it, but he agrees. She then writes up her report to Admiral Trejo and Naomi. Then she met with Kara. She wanted Kara to begin asking the BFE questions instead of just listening to the BFE lecture her. Kara, the dreamer, made contact with the BFE once again. And at first the BFE was showing her more of its history. But Kara began to ask about the gates. And after a while the BFE began showing her new physics. And then it showed her the stars from the world it had evolved. And then it showed her outside of the universe. But while the BFE was showing her, Winston Duarte connected to them. He was the blue one. And he began asking, asking the BFE how did the builders wipe out a hundred systems. He knew they went to war and the war failed. But he wanted to be shown where they buried the guns. And the BFE showed him. And he said, yes, that's what I needed. Thank you. Julian reached out to Colonel Tanaka on the Sparrowhawk to arrange handing over Theresa. Colonel Tanaka and Captain Mugabu recognized that Julian was inexperienced. Colonel Tanaka wasn't sure if this was a trap or not because she expected Naomi to answer. It still bothered her that Jim Holden got the best of her and this time she was going prepared. When Colonel Tanaka got to Draper Station, Julian didn't hand over Teresa right away. She wanted to make sure that they were acting in good faith. And that's when Tanaka attacked. Tanaka advanced through the station, fighting all the way. They managed to hurt her when they used an improvised missile on her, which broke three of her ribs. She then turned up her suit speakers and shouted, The person who brings me Theresa Duarte lives. Everyone else is going to die. Once Gillian realized she had made a mistake, she quickly freed the Rosinante crew and told them to get the hell out. Gillian managed to reach the Guardian Storm, got into it, and launched. She now faced two Laconian ships, the Sparrowhawk and the Direco. She watched as the Rosinante also got away from Draper Station. Julian and the Garen Storm faced off against the Sparrowhawk. Captain Mugabo tried to get her to surrender, but this time Jillian didn't bite. As the Rossi headed for the gate, Jim saw on the tactical display that the Garen Storm was destroyed as was the Sparrowhawk and the director was headed for Draper Station. It wasn't chasing them. So the Rossi slowed down on its rush to the gate. It seems that the director was going to pick up Tanaka. And while they were discussing what just happened, Theresa informed them that Amos just had another seizure. When Amos came through, he explained to Jim that it was because Elvi is pushing harder. And since he is connected, he gets the spillover. He says that there are three of them connected. He's not sure which three. Amos and Jim had a talk. They don't believe that Colonel Tanaka is going to give up and that she may be operating from a need for vengeance. Then Jim tells Amos that he wants to go out knowing that things will be okay without him, that it all keeps going. And Amos says, maybe you're not that important and it ain't up to you to fix the universe. 
Colonel Tanaka was on the Direco chasing after the Rossi. The captain warned her that their supply of high G drugs may not be sufficient for a maximum burn, but she overruled him. Meanwhile, the freighter, the forgiveness, was about to pass through one of the gates on its way to Baragaran. The captain was about to make the jump without clearance, and he knew that was a risk. But as he figured, life is a risk. On the Rossi, they were trying to decide where to go once they go through the gate. That's when Amos said they gotta go see the dock, meaning LV. So they decided they would head for the Adro system. Meanwhile, the ship Kit and his family was on were also close to the gate. On the Rossi, Naomi sent Jim a text saying too many ships. Now they were trying to calculate if they would make it through the gate without being one of the ships to disappear. The Forgiveness and the Rossi both made it. The Direco also made it through the gate, but they were too late to track the emissions of the Rossi. And since they came through the gate too fast, there were medical emergencies among the crew. And the Prius, with Kit and his family, had just begun the transit through the Sol Gate when everything went wrong and their ship and themselves began to drift apart. Their molecules had begun to be pulled apart. In ring space, Colonel Tanaka on the Direco saw the ring station begin to glow. Then her mind seemed to merge into thousands of other minds and she screamed. Just then something reached out, said no, and pulled the Prius and Kit and his family and everyone on that ship back together. The Rossi had made it into the Adro system and as they began to move inward, they noticed that the ring gate was glowing a blue-white light and there were particles streaming from it. Jim asked Amos what he thought about it and Amos said it looks like someone turned it on. Colonel Tanaka had the Prius tethered to the Direco. She was interviewing the captain and all of the passengers trying to find out why that was the only ship ever to come back after disappearing in a ring transit. After speaking with the captain of the priest, she realized that everyone seemed to have experienced that merging of minds. The captain remembered being a woman with very dark skin. After he left, a little research and she found that woman. She then got a message from Admiral Trejo who told her he wants her to concentrate on the mission he gave her, not this one. He was sending two science ships to begin interviewing and taking over for her so that she can go back to her mission. And so she's headed towards Baragaran thinking that that may be where the Rasi went since the last emissions from a ship she saw was headed there. But she kept thinking that there was something she's missing. The Rasi was in the Adro system headed for a meeting with the Falcon which is Elvie's ship. Once both ships were connected, Naomi, Jim and Amos went across leaving Alex and Teresa to stay with the Rossi. Elvi, Fayez and Kara met with them. Elvi began showing them what happened in ring space. She got a direct report and video from Colonel Tanaka who filmed everything. They saw when the Prius disappeared and came back. When that happened, the dark entities attempted to come into ring space as they did before when they killed the Medina station. But all of the rings and the station lit up and that seemed to drive it back. And the rings now seems to be communicating and acting as a living entity. She told them about how everyone in the ring space uh, during the event remembered lives that weren't their own. And 2% of them talked to someone who wasn't there. Kara saw him and Amos said, you think it's Duwati. So Elvie's plan is to put Amos and Kara in contact with the BFE at the same time and then try to talk to Duwati, who do you think is the one operating all the things that's going on in the ring system right now. When Colonel Tanaka got to the Baragaon system, she checked with the Jirida base and they had no sign of the Rosanante coming into the system. She finally concluded that they followed the wrong scent. She was also having vivid memories of things that never happened to her, that happened to other people. When she tried to pick up someone and was turned down, she decided to go and have medical fix her face. After surgery, she was still having memories that were not her own. When Captain Gannon came in to check on her but didn't check on the patient in the bed next to her, she snapped and beat him up. She then caught herself and then went to schedule a psych evaluation. On Rossi, Zan and Theresa are playing with Muskrat, 
while Jim apologized to Fares for getting him and Elvis stuck doing this. But Fares took him onto the Falcon and showed him the catalyst. He had done some investigation and found out who she really was and what she did to be condemned to the pen. He told Jim, anytime he's feeling bad about it, remember that as bad as they are doing now, it would have been worse if Ochida and Cortazar were in charge. They then prepped Amos and Kara and then linked them to the BFE. Kara and Amos link up in the BFE and they meet Duarte and they begin to question him. He tells them that the builders fought an unwinnable war. He tells them that there were tools that were made to fight against the enemy that sit on the third side of the gates. He says it's a war that humans can win but not without some changes changes that he's working on. He says that we are not stronger than they are, but we are base material, and that is our power. They were fragile, we are robust. He said that they built but were unable to effectively use certain tools that prevent the enemy from intruding into what we mean when we say the universe, but these tools exist and he believes that we can make effective use of them. But in order to access those tools, we need to become more like them. We need to become a hive mind. When he was asked, will we be people? He says, we will be better. And then they were pulled out. Apparently, while Kara and Amos was connected, Duarte appeared not only to them, but he appeared in the control room of the ship and he spoke with Elvi. After he disappeared, Elvi, Naomi, Jim and Fares got together and began discussing what he said. The first thing they wanted to know is if he could do what he said he was going to do. And the answer was probably. The next question was what sort of hive mind would he create? Would it be like ants or would it be like one group mind? There was no answer to that. After they left, Amos came to Elvi and told her that what she's doing to Kara and Zan stops now. Then he left and Elvi was afraid. So Colonel Tanaka went to see a psychiatrist to help alleviate the memories that have been popping into her mind, those foreign memories that have been bothering her, causing her emotional distress. After speaking with the psychiatrist for a while, the psychiatrist prescribed her some pills for her to take. When she got back to her room, she got a call from Dr. Oshida, who had analyzed the data that she sent from ring space. When all the rings and the ring station were lit up, one dark spot was analyzed and it corresponded with the egg ship that Duarte used to disappear. And it was resting on the ring station. She had finally found him. Kit and his family are now unrested and he's having the same problem as everyone else who were in the event in the ring space. Very strong memories that isn't his. He remembered dying on the Prius and a man who wasn't in the room with them managed to unkill them. The man did it with great effort. The effort exhausted him. He and Rohi seems to be losing themselves in these other memories and it seemed to be getting worse. Then one day he was called to the hospital because his son was acting strange. The doctor told him that they have a standing order from the Laconian Science Directory that any abnormalities that rise among the people that were under treatise should be documented and the data sent to Laconia. But the doctor told him because of who his father is, the report will slip behind his desk and it could take years before he noticed. Both Kit and Rohi feel that they're losing who they are and they're worried about their son. If it's affecting them so much, what is it doing to him? Naomi is preparing a report to send to various people all over the underground but when she does there's no doubt that Admiral Trejo will learn what she's doing. Right now people in the underground are beginning to make their own decisions. Later she went and talked to Elvi. Elvi admits that she's been trying to do this by herself but she can't and she's gonna need help. So Naomi came up with a second idea. She accepted Admiral Trejo's proposal and the amnesty that he offered to the underground. In return, she sent him all of the facts and briefings and interviews around the experiment of what Duarte is doing. Theresa made her promise that if she's going to kill Duarte, that she will tell her first. And Naomi promised. Admiral Trejo answered and he sent back information directing them to where he thinks Duarte was at the ring station. She now has to pass that information on to Elvi. Colonel Tanaka is dreaming. 
in her dreams she's having memories of things that never happened to her but happened to other people. Things got so bad that when she woke up she had to repeat to herself who she was. Once she contacted her ship, the captain asked her if this has anything to do with the armistice. She got a message from Admiral Trejo briefing her on what was happening between Naomi and himself and the underground and also what's going on with Duarte. And it looks as if Duarte has succeeded in stopping all of the attacks from the Dark Ones. But her mission remains the same, bringing back Duarte. She then told Captain Button to get the ship ready to launch as soon as she got back. And she headed for the psychiatrist's office. Once she got to the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist informed her that the memory glitches are also happening to her. And she told Tanaka that something is connecting their neurons, not just in ring space, but everywhere. And if it succeeds, they won't be human anymore. There will be just one part of her brain that is vast and interconnected. There will be no more than neurons and cells. The psychiatrist, Amidi, asked her, how can it spread like a contagion? How can it do that? And Tanaka said she doesn't know, but she'll find out. When she was asked, how do you stop it? She said she'd find that out too. She took the pills that the doctor gave her to be synthesized. She returned and gave the psychiatrist a packet of pills and then she told her she will do what she can. That's the end of part two. Part three will be in an upcoming video. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe, give us a like, drop us a comment and I will see you in the next video.